Kigali, we had a very thoughtful and exciting conversations on how Africa would look like in the next 60 years. We sought to understand, among other things, uh, why Africa, which is the richest continent in terms of natural and human resources, is the poorest in terms of living standards, and what we can do about that. COSI2 Festival uh, of Ideas is a continuation of those conversations and those deliberations that are aimed at shaping our continent in the years to come. As organizers and conveners of this festival, we had many ideas about how to structure KUSI 2 in order to take the ideas that came from, uh, from KUSI 1 forward and to translate them into uh, tangible actions. But like everybody else, we didn't foresee that coronavirus would cause one of the greatest social health and economic upheavals in the world in nearly 100 years. At some point, we are not even sure whether KUSI 2 would take place given all the travel restrictions and other challenges brought about by COVID-19. But I'm very, very happy that we are going ahead with KUSI 2 despite all these challenges. When COVID-19 struck at the beginning of this year, the Afro-pessimists apocalyptically predicted that the virus would wipe out most of the African population due to lack of adequate health facilities, equipment, financial resources, protective gear, and health personnel to cope with the pandemic, among other challenges. The latest statistics, ladies and gentlemen, indicate that globally, over 68 million cases of COVID-19 cases have been reported with over 1.5 million deaths, most of them from Asia, Europe, South and North America. Africa, on the other hand, with a population of more than 1 billion, 1 billion people, has less than 2.5 million reported cases and less than 60,000 reported deaths from the virus. While recognizing that the threat from the virus is still with us, and we must continue to fight its spread by adhering to all the health protocols, the worst of what was predicted about Africa did not happen. By and large, Africa, has fared better than the rest of the world. And there are experts who have spoken about that and will continue to do so. What did we do right to avoid the apocalyptic predictions? Ladies and gentlemen, the response to COVID-19 in most African countries has been spectacular. In January this year, when the pandemic broke, apart from maybe South Africa, no other African country had laboratories that could test for the virus. But by February, three had, and today all of them do, with Nigeria leading the pack with eight laboratories with the capacity to test the virus. Most of the personal protective equipment, PPEs, including masks and the sanitizers were imported. Today, most of the countries are able to produce their own PPEs and sanitizers in addition to other equipment and a sharp increase in isolation bed capacities and ICU units. Ladies and gentlemen, among all the, the pain and disruption we have gone through because of COVID-19, our response is telling us something wonderful about ourselves as Africans. It tells us about our resilience and creativity. It tells us that with courage, determination, creativity, and utilizing the innovative minds of our youth, Africa can make a quantum loop in all spheres of development in the 21st century and, and, and take uh, our continent uh, to, to, to the next level and take her place in the, her rightful place among the developed nations. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, it reinforces what came out very clearly from KUSI-1 deliberations, that Africa does not need to rely on or look east or west to find solutions to our problems. Solutions are right here with us. I have no doubt in my mind that Africa will come out of this pandemic, but we are not out of the woods yet. In the words of His Highness Deaga Khan, the founder of Nation Media Group, he tells us that the key to overcoming this crisis resides in our collaborative actions and responses. And it is by learning from each other that we will address the issues at hand 
in the most efficient way and build a stronger post-COVID-19 world. COSI2, ladies and gentlemen, is providing that forum. I want to conclude my remarks by asking all of us here present who are participating in this event to seize the opportunity that COSI2 has provided to share important lessons and uh, uh, the important lessons the pandemic has taught us in addition to continuing with the conversation we started in Kigali a year ago on where we want to position Africa among the community of nations in the 21st century. In this conversation, it is my humble submission, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that our youth who constitute a significant majority of our population need to be at the center stage. I thank you all and look forward to an enjoyable two days of sharing ideas and experiences that I'm sure will contribute greatly to shaping Africans' fortunes and destiny in the 21st century. Asante Nisana. Asante Nisana. Dr. Thank Wilfred Kiboro, the chairman of the nation.